Ultra-strong materials that are also tough enough to resist failure are important for many applications, from making efficient robots to aircraft and spacecraft that can survive in extreme environments. In metals, reducing the grain size to nanoscale has been shown to increase the strength dramatically. However, these nanocrystalline metals are very brittle and are prone to catastrophic failure. Creating a gradient in grain size distribution, varying from nanocrystalline at the surface to coarse grained in the interior, can potentially improve the ductility of the nanocrystalline metals. We have demonstrated that this new class of materials, called gradient nanograined metals, can be created through high velocity impact. We use silver microcubes as the model system and shoot them at supersonic velocities using LIPIT, a laser induced projectile impact testing. How does LIPIT work? Gold vapor is produced by laser ablation between a glass substrate and a layer of polymer to locally expand the polymer in a fraction of a second to launch the projectile. The projectile, a silver microcube in this case, was drop casted on top of the polymer and fired at a supersonic velocity of 400 meters per second directly at a rigid impenetrable target. When we look at the impacted microcubes in a scanning electron microscope, we find interesting deformation characteristics. Depending on the impact orientation, whether it's on a face, an edge, or a corner, the deformed cubes preserve extrinsic particle-shaped symmetries. If we take a closer look at the surfaces, we notice surface slip steps that have formed due to the active slip systems of the intrinsic crystal structure. So what happens during impact? The impact generates a shock wave with extreme pressure, greater than 9 gigapascals. This pressure far exceeds the 60 megapascal yield strength of silver. In fact, such intense pressure in a short time leads to a hydrodynamic stress state. The material plastically deforms without much shear resistance, causing severe plastic flow at the bottom region of the impacted cube. As the pressure decreases to near the yield strength of silver, crystallographic slips ensue, and dislocation avalanches exiting the crystal form the surface slip steps. With such a severe deformation on the outside, you might be wondering, what happened to the internal structure of the initial single crystal? To study this, we used a focused ion beam to prepare a thin lamella, less than 100 nanometers thick, from the middle section of the deformed cube. Then, by examining this lamella at the atomic scale in a transmission electron microscope, we identified an extreme gradient nanograin structure, having grain sizes varying from 10 nanometers to 500 nanometers over a distance of 500 nanometers. We identified lots of local deformation features, plenty of dislocations, stacking faults, local deformation twinning, and so on. A huge amount of energy is stored in the impacted microcubes due to these defects and new, extremely small, misoriented grains. So what happens to this highly strained material over time? After a while, the nanograins coalesce and grow into larger grains. The internal nanostructure undergoes complete recovery. After a month, the most deformed region displays the characteristics of a single crystalline material. Surprisingly, this occurs at room temperature without any external thermal annealing, revealing an interesting microstructural evolution path from nanocrystalline to single crystalline. This recrystallization can be retarded by alloying the metals with elements that preferentially move to the grain boundaries and stabilize the nanostructure. At an intermediate state of recrystallization, this gradient nanograined metal should have desirable strength and toughness for applications requiring survivability in extreme environments. Sport-related collisions, automobile and aircraft crashes, and micrometeorite spacecraft collisions are only a few of the many extreme situations where the gradient nanograined metals can have a real impact.